What's up, Capoeira Nation? Welcome back to the Capoeira Experience Podcast. Thank you so much for being part of the Capoeira community. Thank you so much for being connected to the to your school, to the Capoeira community around you. I hope you get to travel. Uh, traveling is the best part for me to, to get connected with community, but also to support the podcast and, and be connected with the community through the podcast. You know, the, this is a podcast from the community to the community. So I'm very happy to, to have friends and have many many people all around the world uh, sharing their experience here in the podcast. And that being said, today I have a, a really good special guest because uh, we got connected through my traveling is Capoeira. And it's funny because they, so my students, they, they told me, oh, is this, this Capoeira event Madison? And which have uh, the vlog on, on the YouTube channel, you can see really really nice event one of one of the unique events i've ever been and and it's really cool when they got when they told me you know is this a high seas brazil event i was like oh wait a minute i started in high seas brazil and then and then they told me oh it's going to be uh, uh an event in a farm i was like wait a minute i never been like this i want to go so is and we got connected we uh me and my students got to 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 be at this amazing event and then I met her. Uh, we got connected there too. We we became friends since there. And then I'm I'm very excited to have her to to share their experience, especially with our amazing idea of of um, bachisado and nafacenda. So is, please let me introduce you to introduce instructora Folia Seca. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Thank you. How are you? Good, 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 good. I'm I'm happy to to have you here and to see. To, to get to know you a little bit better because sometimes is I want to have a conversation with the host of the events, but sometimes because I know how events work, you are so focused on so many things, it's going to be hard to engage in a conversation. So it's, I'm happy to, to get to know you a little bit better. Likewise, yeah. I, we didn't get to talk too, too much there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so I'm, I'm happy to have you here. And then uh, to get started, uh, I like I ask everybody, well, what are your social media so people can find you there? Oh, and Madison and all, all of you guys. Uh, well, I don't have much, but Jaices do Brasil or Roots of Brazil Madison is on Facebook. Um, and I think that might be it. Hey. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. That's okay. Is, that, is, that a, is there a website where people can find you? A lot you? of our students are on um, Instagram. And, oh, nice. Okay. Um, yeah. I, can I send that to you? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'll put all the links down here okay. on the on the description, on the notes of the podcast, and and people can check there. And uh, I usually put links on the Instagram description. That I know doesn't work for Instagram, but it, pe people can click on on Facebook. Okay, and great. they can find you there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And any websites for people to to find you there that that would be great. So people can if if they're close, Madison, and if you get to to visit Madison. There, uh, Madison, Wisconsin. Please, please, please go reach out to Folia Seca because you're gonna have fun there. And then, uh, what is your capoeira story to get people to get to know you, where you started, and until where you are right now? Yeah, well, I don't know if you want the short version or the long version, so I'll just I'll tell you something. Hey, hey, any version, <laughs> yes, that, that, something that comes out of, from from your mind and your heart, anything. Yeah, so in late 2005, I was a community organizer and one of my good friends, Julio, was at a campus and this is in Grand Rapids, Michigan. So just outside of Grand Rapids, it's like he came, he came back from the campus and he said, I saw something on campus that I think you're going to love. And I had actually never heard of Capoeira. And so cool. I went and I saw it and I just, um, on, you know, first sight, like I fell in love and um, I went to the first class that was their last class of and then they took a summer break so I had to wait for the rest of the summer and then start in fall so that was wow. really hard I got a taste and I came back and showed my roommate like this is Jenga and then looked oh, back and I'm like I was I was even doing that incorrectly you know I, I had no idea what I was doing and um and yeah I just fell in love with it with the physicality of it with the a little bit of the history, what I knew at the time even, um, and being a community organizer, saw those connections. Um, I'm not naturally good at music, but I love it. And so yeah. also hearing people create music and then other people moving to it and it looked like, 
what are they doing? They seem like they're interacting. You know, I don't know if I would have said at the time they're having a conversation, but um, I couldn't couldn't quite figure out what it was. And yeah. it just, um, I I just, I like, I just wanted more. I don't know yeah. how it was when you first saw Capoeira, but same, it, same. I had just, I had never seen anything like it in my life. Kashishi. Yeah, 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 same. Well, when, and it's the same thing. When, when I, I asked my friend, the his brother was training in the high school and they were talking about like macaco and jinga and and i was like man what, what the hell they're talking about and my, my friend was like yo my, my brother practiced capoeira and i was like what is that and then he was like there's a class in this university that you should go and then when i got out of the subway he took me like straight to to the capoeira class the university is huge but i got i went straight to the class and and same thing. I, I saw uh, the Hada, they were practicing music and then uh, also like a music class before the class. And then they, which actually they were practicing the Malandre Malandre Capoeira, Malandre Malandre. That's from uh -huh. Isaac. Uh, I, I, I love that song. Yeah, I forgot who made it, but they, I think the person that made it is from Isaac of Brazil. I don't, I completely forgot. What you say? It could, that could be, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think it's contra I don't remember that he, then the, he became uh jingado, but uh, they were practicing that music with a beating bow, and I was like, Man, what is this? It's pretty cool. And then I sat down, and then that was my first class, and they never stopped since then. That's awesome. You know, yeah. who taught me that song, Malau? Who you met and you know now, you know, Malau? Um, Malau? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. He told you that song. He taught me, well, I don't, I think he was the first one I heard sing it. And so often, like, that's how I learned a lot of music. When, once I was in Santa Cruz, I would listen to what, usually Mr. Papiba or Malau were singing the hall, then I would go home and then look it up and then just. Oh, oh nice. Yeah, but it was usually like here. And I think Malau was the first person I heard sing that song. Nice, nice. And what, and what happened after, after seeing Capoeira first time? You wait the, the entire year and oh, just the back, summer. Back in Michigan, right? Yeah, just the summer. Um, and and then yeah, I just started. So I would I did it for maybe five or six months there, and then I I moved back home to Wisconsin. Okay. Um, and then I, you know, there was there was no that was Capoeira Manjinga. There was no Manjinga here in in Madison. I trained with Omalu for maybe six months. And then okay. um, I I just happened to find out about Jaisi de Brasil. Sabi Jinho had just started the school and I okay. started um, training maybe one or two classes. And then I kept training with them for a while and I eventually felt like it was a good fit. And I decided to leave my, um, my current group then, right? And then um, switch to Jaisi de Brasil. I stayed here for a bit and then I um, took another community organizing job in California. And so I moved there and cool. was there for 10 years um, oh, nice. okay. and trained a lot in Santa Cruz and then somewhat in um, San Francisco with okay. some of Meshi Papiba's students had a, a small school there. And so I would go back and forth. I was living in San Jose, California. Oh, cool. And then so that was like around 2015, 16 when when you uh, 2007 to 2000 um i guess 2018 we left there then i i met my current husband in capoeira and Are you <laughs> yeah, yeah i broke my own rule um and hey. we left in 2018 for yeah. for madison oh cool my my best friend uh my best friend's name was caju i see in, in high school, brazil yeah yeah. Really? Yeah, There's yeah. another Kaju? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was it was pretty cool. When 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 I heard the Kaju, I was the name Kaju name, I was like, wait a minute, who's that? Then I was <laughs> looking and then when I saw him walking, I was like, man, that's so cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh and then, wow. And that yeah. was in Teresina. No, in Venezuela, in Caracas. Oh, that was in Venezuela. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. Okay. That was his cup with name. Yeah, yeah, his cup with a nickname. I forgot why, but but why why his name is Kaju? um <laughs> it's not it's, it's, there's no real story he just, oh, okay. um that fruit is in the is found in the state where he's from and oh um, cool okay yeah yeah 
Nice. Why Foliaseca? Where the Foliaseca came from? Also, no real story there. When I was in Manjinga, I just, the, my padre, the guy who baptized me. Yeah. I was, I just love, it was fall and I love leaves. And I think he saw me like collecting. Oh, cool. No story there. <laughs> cool, cool. Well, yeah. he's, he's funny because he's the beginning of the fall now. And then Foliaseca. Nice. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Yeah, Good yeah, timing. that's true. That's no. true. I actually hadn't thought of that. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty. Cool. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, when when was the timing when you uh, started teaching and you decide when you decide like I do I want to teach I I want to have my first class and I want to commit to this. Um. Well, I so in Santa Cruz, whenever um, you also met Quachi, Professor Quachi, right? Okay. Um, whenever he wasn't in town, he would have me teach for him. Oh, cool. So I was, I was his backup in Santa Cruz. Then he started his own, um, offshoot school in Monterey, nice. California. And so likewise there, when, whenever he couldn't teach, I would teach for him. So I, I, I started to know that I liked teaching. Nice. Um, I also really loved being a student though. And there are nice. enough, um, high courts in Santa Cruz that, there was no reason to have my own class, right? Yeah. There was, there wasn't really a need to, um, yeah, there are enough, at least at that time, I think there are enough teachers. So I would just fill in when, when Quachi or sometimes Papipa needed it. Um, and then when I moved here, it, um, yeah, I think the same thing, I would have been fine being a student. Um, I love, I love being a student and, um, it it seemed like there was a, a need for um, more leadership in like the creative and the teaching space in the okay. group. Yeah. And um and so I kind of felt that out for a while, maybe I don't know how long, some months, yeah. and then had some conversations with a couple of the students and with Sabi. And um and honestly, Tashi Shi, I have a side to me that's ambitious. Like I, if yeah. I, I wanted to, I wanted to try that on. I wanted yeah. to try, um, try leading. And I had, you know, my own ideas that it's, they're easier to, to try on when you're sort of the only, or one of the only teachers in a space. Yeah. Um, when you have ideas about methodology or like what you, what you would like a class to look like, yeah. um, so it seemed like there was space for that here and a, just a really um, open and receptive community. And so I also, you know, talked to the other, the other person who had my core level to see if he was open to that. And at the time it was like, people took turns teaching. Okay. And there, I, I didn't sense that there was any one person who had been interested in and leading the group so it seemed like there there was space for that and so there was conversation that's um the contra mestri sabi jim who you also yeah. met and yeah, he was yeah. my first teacher in high ECs. nice okay so there there was there were conversations that we had and you know not always easy but always open yeah 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 and uh you you met him in madison right because I, I remember he uh you guys mentioned that he opened the the, the classes in madison yeah, he started the group here and he started the group with, um, so with three others with his, with his wife, Leoa, and then with um, Pirata, who okay. I don't know if he's teaching right now, but he has taught in the past and um, he was, I don't know what his cord was, I think he might have been a professor at the time or almost, and then, um, and then his partner. Uh, okay. Yeah, so they they were they all started really with Sabi, but they they were all supportive and started the group together. Nice. Um, but it was Sabi's it was Sabi's group, and and he was here for I think ten years. Oh wow, cool! I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah that that that's a that's, it, it takes a lot of work. Was it was you guys, just you guys and Omolu and Madison? At the time, I think there was also an Angola. Yeah, there was also an Angola group at the time. And oh, I believe good. still sometimes there, I believe there is. I'm not quite sure what their status is. Oh, okay. Okay. Then, uh, and w when was the time when Savi was like, hey, you know, I'm leaving town. You, you the boss now. You're in charge of this now. Oh, no. He wasn't here when, when I moved back. He hadn't been here for three years. 
Oh, okay. okay. Oh, or so, you- so I might not have that exactly right, but about about three years, maybe a little bit more. I'm not sure. Yeah. Oh, okay. So when when you move from California to Madison, he wasn't there yet. When I moved from California back to Madison, um, no, he had he was no longer here. They had oh. gone back. He had family needs. His his wife really needed to move. They all they both their families are from there. Yeah. They both needed to move back. Oh, okay. And so he had been back in um, the Bay Area, not in Santa Cruz, but he had been back there for about three years. And the the group, um, you know, so you met Aza. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So Aza and her husband, Loco Machiva, did a lot to keep the group financially solvent. Oh. And, um, and, and then they had different people. Yeah. They got to have different people teach. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. So, so they were in charge in, in those three years gap in between he left and you came back. Yeah, they were oh, cool. keeping. Wow, that's um, awesome. Yeah, they were, and they were. I think that they, I don't. I don't want to say low chords, but they. Yeah, yeah. They didn't have high chords, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, for um, sure. Yeah. And they were really. They were still very much students, and they're still yeah. students, but they um they had the desire to keep the group alive. They had. That's what they it takes. Their, yeah the community together and i don't think it was from everything you know all yeah. the stories they told me it wasn't an easy task but the yeah, desire sure. was there yeah and like so sometimes we get the, the ego in front of us right and be like oh you have to be hardcore to to keep us cool it's like man if, if you want to keep the school alive doesn't matter the core as long as as there's people want, wanting to learn and come together i think that's that's what actually matters you know yeah that's right yeah. that's right And and uh, when you came back to Madison, how do you have a conversation with them and be like, hey, you know, uh, let's let's bring this back alive and get stronger on these and make our class grow? Uh, well, there were already I would I'm maybe seven or eight uh, that's students. So, that's so cool. Together, um, yeah. in and out classes were and I mean this still ha this still can happen like sometimes three three students uh, like a big class might be eight um, but there is still very much a group here when I got back and I think you know thanks to them and thanks to others who were helping keep the group alive like um, right okay continuing to come to classes um, so I think without without all of the students deciding, having their own volition to keep yeah. the group together there wouldn't have been a group for me to come back to so first I we, we came in and we were just um going to classes I would teach um and just fe you know feeling it out and really yeah. getting to know our new community because a lot of the people were new and yeah. I was I was pregnant and um we were looking for a house and I remember still like we're trying to figure out like who you know who everybody is and yeah. like I mean we know who they are but like yeah. who they are right yeah yeah, yeah and exactly we were right. at um I'll never forget this we were at an Omalu event and I'm standing around pretty pregnant with Loco Mochiba who is our <laughs> treasurer and yeah. um Oz's husband and and so we had um just gotten our our first house right yeah. and um we were going to move and I was telling him I don't know if I can do it that weekend we're going to be moving and he said oh we'll help you move and I looked at him and said oh I thank you but no it's okay we're we'll we'll, yeah. we'll figure it out maybe we'll get family or hire people and he said no we'll help you and I said we just I mean we're we're just getting to know you guys it's so it's cool that's okay and he said What else is community for, Folia? Oh, man, yes. And I yes. was just, of course, I was pregnant, so I was already, like, you know, oh, <laughs> very emotional. Nice. But yeah. I, re I mean, that was one of the first, um, the first moments that I realized, oh, yeah, like, these people are willing to, ex like, totally bring yeah. us into their community. And yes. And let like let us lean into them too, and um, and so yeah, they moved us. I think um, there was a group of Pro Chigu Moiu Boca Suja. Wow, um, that's pretty cool. Locomotiva, they all moved us in here. That's so cool. It's, yeah. it's, it's so funny how like one simple e either word or action can change the entire thing. Because yes. the, the the same thing happened with with my best friend. That's how we became best friend, and 
it was an issue that happened with him and um, another friend of us like told him to get out of the car and I was like to take the bus and but like, it was really really far from home and I was like we uh Kaju and I we used to live very close and I was like don't worry I'll get out of the car with you uh, I'll take the bus with you and the issue was with him wasn't with me I was like don't worry man I'll take the bus with you and then since that moment the, our entire relationship changed we became best friends since then and then because of that one simple action and and or or word changed the entire dynamic Oh my gosh, just got yeah. goosebumps. Yeah, it's like when somebody says and shows, I'm there with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he builds that, that relationship and, and makes makes your relationship tighter. He's, he's really cool to see those kind of stuff. Yeah. 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 And, Thank and, you for telling me that story. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. And then well, when was the time where when you guys had the bachisado and, and were like, or first event and be like, hey, I think we have a really good level, a really good amount of people for us to have our first, first batch of Um, I, I mean, it was the next year. So I came, we came, Kaju and I came in late like November, 2018. Oh, and nice. we had a batch the next year. I think they had just had a batch maybe earlier that year. I believe they had a batch I know they did in earlier 2018. So they were That's still so having batch that's so cool. Nice. Yeah. So they would do a lot. The group here would do the st- group of students would do all of the organizing, uh, really wow. all of the work. Right. And then, um, and they would have Contra Messi Sabijinho and Papiba come and then support the event with all of their knowledge and experience and, you know, um, abilities to put a group, to, yeah. uh, an event together, but there was certainly, um work happening on the ground here to continue it and I think it just that's a testament to like what you were speaking to it's if there's a desire like if there's a group of people it doesn't it doesn't take what people necessarily think that it takes to keep a group together I think we often think of um a group around one like charismatic leader and that's what it's like that's when people come and are drawn Yes, and I'm sure there's something to that. And the reason that people are usually um, usually decide to stay isn't because of one person. Yeah, yeah. You know, like leadership ability or like hot cop waiter. Like lots yeah. of people do hot cop waiter, but yeah. um, the group decided right as a community that they wanted to keep something going. And um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and when new people see like you know like. Because if you see that that unity in, in the group and you see that like Asa and Lokomotiva working together and then the other students working to hell together and helping each other, the other people are going to be like that. This, this, this is cool. You know, is it's that sense of community there that help other people to feel welcome to, you know. Right. Right. Yeah. And it offers um, reciprocity. Like, we, yes. you know, I'm from a community organizing background and being able to have mutual relationship and mutual experience, mutual positive experience is really important. So it's not like 100%. one person is offering and other people are just receiving, right? Yeah. And it doesn't, I think t- we need to take into account more in Capoeira that um, people have life skills outside of Capoeira. So yes. if, if you just expect one person to have everything, then one, like that puts too much, like on a message, for example, any yeah. given message, if you ex- expect one message to have everything, then like that's putting a lot of pressure on that person. And it's also right. not respecting all of the gifts of everybody else who's coming into a room. Like yes, just because right. somebody's a beginner capoeirista doesn't mean they don't have life skills. Right? Yeah, totally, totally. Yeah. And I think sometimes we act as if that were the case. Yeah, yeah. And and it's the same too. Like like for example, if if you put on the on the scale of me, like you know, like like you said, like a mestre is is not gonna offer you hundred percent of the knowledge, and yeah. then be like, well, you know, you the mestre, you're supposed to teach me everything. He's like, well, wait a minute, but I'm, I'm I don't have the whole full truth in my hands. <laughs> You, go, you, you can go travel and explore and bring the information and share it with your master. You probably mm-hmm. learn something that your master never seen before. And is is nothing wrong with that. And it's nothing be like, you know, the master or sorry, the, the students is 
walking on top of the mess or anything like that. It's not, it's not, it's not that case. And again, the ego comes in front of us and be like, oh no, you know, I'm the highest scorer. I'm the one giving everything. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. And, and also like on the other side, because I've seen also uh, many times of students be like, you know, I learned this at a time of my school. My teacher never taught me this. And when I brought it to my, to my teacher, they never, they don't know what I just learned and be like, well, you're supposed to be a teacher. Well, you don't know this. They're like, well, you know, you see, <laughs> I don't have all the answers. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. And there's like, there's so many different styles out there. There's so yes. much to learn, right? Yeah. Yeah. And especially Capoeira, right? Capoeira is such a wide, uh, uh, no ways to approach it. So many, so many ways to approach it. And then somebody's going to have a different ways of teaching. Somebody's going to have different ways to, to teach one specific thing. You know, and uh, Keishada can be many, many persons how to teach Keishada. And then who knows, you probably go to a different school and be like, oh, you know, I, I just learned how to, this trick of Keishada. And it's just, like you say, it's different styles. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I hope this doesn't take us off too much, but um, this just seems like an appropriate um, tangent. Uh, yeah, of course. Oh, oh, so I take classes with um, an Angoleta. Okay. Who, but through Zoom, yeah. um, who talks about a sutakis in Capoeira. Okay, accents. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, and sh I think her name is Anna, and she, uh, Anna Costa, and I think that she gets this from Mr. Cabello, I believe. I don't know if you ever met him. He's um, from the Maybe. Bahia area. He's no, an Angolan. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. Um, and she talks about how... Um, it's important to develop your own sutaki. And so it's good oh. to go out and get right to, like different information, understand, like you, you visit other halls, you visit different groups and you can bring in different things. And I mean, she's talking about this in the context of the kind of Angola that they play, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think it's applicable in, in other parts of Capoeira uh, too, like 100%. to understand like what is, what is your sutaki? What yeah. is the accent that you're trying to speak yeah. right and i have so that's i really appreciated her like that that question or that um yeah that she poses because it's it's had me thinking since i first heard her say it like what yeah what is what is our sutaki yeah and yeah you you do need like you do need information from different places totally totally and it's yes. fun to bring it in and be like how could i incorporate this or make it our sutaki or does it fit or does it only fit like if i'm visiting a different hall then we're, we're playing a certain rhythm right yeah yeah and i like that because he's he's really cool uh how how you can approach that and how can you apply it? Because it's the same thing. Like I always tell my students, all of them, go travel. I don't care where you go. And as long as uh, you stay safe and I know where you guys are in case, you know, I don't know. I don't know who the person is, but travel, man, travel. I'm, I'm not, again, I'm not going to be the one teaching you everything. So it's, but when you travel, when you come back, share what you learn and see, and see how, how, how we can help each other to be like, oh, this is actually really cool. And be like, you know, it's, it's really nice that, that to see other people learning and 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 experiencing different different ideas. Yeah. Yeah. And what, what's your sutaki? What, what what do you how how do you, how do you take that like into class or or how how do you take it? Hmm. Well, I don't know if I can tell you without <laughs> <laughs> without showing you. Um. I mean, you were at the Bachisado. You yeah. see the kind of. Hey, show now that we play is yeah, yeah. um i would say and i don't this is just one perspective and this is just my interpretation but For i sure, would yeah. say that it's um maybe a looser version of hey show now and okay. um a more um well at least i'll say for me what i'm what i'm trying to incorporate is what i see in what I've always tried to incorporate and I have a hard time doing, but it's, it's something that really draws me is when I'm playing our style is, um, Papiba's ability to flow and to, um, have one movement be a part of the next movement. Yes. And that's something that I, I find myself struggling with. So I like, that's the sutaki that I aspire to have is just a, a more flowing game. That nice. Has, okay. Yeah. Nice. 
Yeah, the the ones who made Mr. Papiva, I was like, man, Mr. Papiva is, is like that person that you want to hang out with. He's, he's like, like really smooth energy. And he's like, Mr. You, I just want to talk to you. <laughs> that, that's why when you saw me at the, at the event, I always try to like sit next to him and see, just like ask questions and, and have a conversation with him because it, it was really super, super nice to, to have a conversation with, with him. And yeah, from him. really easy to talk to. Yeah, yeah, super nice, super, super welcoming, and I was like, man, he's, he was like, he he got a piece from me, that that, and I definitely, definitely want to go visit him. I, I hope soon. <laughs> yeah, I hope you do. I really, yeah, I, yeah, I hope you do. Send pictures. I know you will send video. Oh <laughs> uh, yes, yes. Oh, whenever, whenever I make a trip, I will definitely will be recording. And then how, when was the time uh, uh, for people here that they don't know, because the, the way we met is on your bachisado, on you guys' bachisado of uh, Nova Senda in the, mm -hmm. in the farm of Asa's family. Yeah. How, how that idea came up to, the, to, to make, to provide a land and the ideas and, and what to do on the farm, how, how that came up? Yeah, well, we had, of course, decided like most most people after March of 2020 not to do a bachisada, not to do any kind of an event uh, last year. And then this year we had decided the same thing. We had a, a meeting and we have monthly meetings and everybody agreed it was still not a good idea to have an event. And then um, somehow it was local Shiva somehow local Shiva started started thinking about how we could have an event so yeah. he's like if if I'm more introverted he's definitely he's like the opposite yes <laughs> I, I'm a little bit more of an extrovert he, but he, he's a lot of an extrovert so he nice. he loves the party of the bachisado he loves the celebration <laughs> he loves all of the people and he would say I think that there's something extra something special about a bachi sadhu that like I would have I would um I would often be just fine having an encontro you know um, yeah not necessarily need the bachi sadhu and he would say like that 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 adds something yeah totally, to totally. right so he um he was advocating um for it with me and at first I was very resistant and said no, nice. I just, I don't think that's a good idea. And, yeah. um, so he, he and Asa came over, um, as yeah. they often do, and we sat outside, had a conversation about it. And he gave me all of his, um, his best, his, his, he gave me his best pitch. And, um, and at the end of it, we, what we settled on is, okay, I will go and see the place Yeah, and we'll, and we'll I'll, I'll take a look. And so, um, but I was already, even before that, I think what I was con convinced of, and I had conversations with a couple folks in, in Santa Cruz, um, who, you know, I look at as guides. Um, I, um, I had decided that I, it would be good for our students. It would be good for our, our, our high seas local community. And yeah. I, it would be good for our larger community and that this might be a way that we could all come together safely. And, um, and I couldn't uh, like my reasons for not doing it started falling away. Yeah. <laughs> and, you you start adding stuff and be like, Oh yeah, well, this is good. This is good. This is good. Well, I think it's going to be good. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, um, and you know, like the not being ready for or getting too hung up on, well, how long, how long have people been training? Do we should, you know, what about new cords and this yeah. and that? It's, I think you have to get past some of that stuff. I mean, that's yeah. what I learned and just look at, is this good for our community? Would, yeah, it, totally. would it have more benefit than, than challenge? And so I saw the place and you saw the place, but yeah, I imagine yeah. like the barn was full of, um, I think Aza wouldn't be upset with me for saying this, but like, hey no I'll say stuff stuff okay and, but still they had lights up they've had weddings there and I could easily imagine what they were describing yeah me. yeah right? and so I think I went from um the conditional to yeah. the future tense and I think that's when they knew I was like well if we 
you know, if we would do this. And, and then I went, I, I started speaking that, well, we'll do this when we'll, yeah. and then they realized, okay, I think she's sold. Yeah, nice, nice. They start putting ideas together and see the whole, yeah. they, they put the entire picture in your head and yeah. it. Nice. <laughs> Yeah. And then as we talked, we realized, oh, this might make more sense. I forget who said this. Maybe it was somebody else, but, um, or a different, a different student talked about doing more than one day yeah. and having it be more of like a retreat feel. So we almost called it a retreat, but we ended up, we ended up not, but that's what we, that's what the, the that's what the, um, that's the feel we were going for. Nice. Okay. Having a, like away from feeling. Yeah. Like nice. away from all of the stuff that we're all all dealing with right now. Yeah, yeah. But we, it was a really good idea because a lot everybody was having so much fun, and then camping and the lake, and it, it was really really cool to see. And the super fresh food. Did you get out? So you got out in the boat, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was <laughs> I was in the boat with Mr. Papiva, and then uh, Sabi, and yeah, well, yeah, it was a few of us. Awesome. Super super good. nice, yeah. And did you get bitten up that weekend? A did bit? what? Did you get bitten up a little bit? Oh, by by the mosquitoes. mosquitoes? Hey, yeah, a little <laughs> bit. But the funny thing is, like, I, I forgot the name of the girl that that had the short hair. Um, I forgot the name, but she I, when I saw her plane, I was so, I saw her from the back. It looked like, like like uh, you know those things that you connect all the dots, like to to make a figure. That's how her back looks like, and I was like. Jesus is like all the mosquitoes like on her. <laughs> oh, was it one of the beginning students? Uh, yeah. The, yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, oh, hey, me, Whitney. I think so. I think so. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. That her her boyfriend is a is a skinny guy with glasses. I think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Her. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. when I saw her back, I was like, oh my god, that her back. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I got a few bites. I know that Colorida got a bunch of bites and Papa Leg was got a bunch of bites too. <laughs> yeah. But it, it, it was super fun and, and we had a lot, a lot of fun. That that was the last thing we, we remember is is the the entire the workshops were really fun, the lake, camping, everything was really cool. I mean, you to you four totally represent your group. A, a group oh, thank you. Yeah, a contingency of four coming from Indiana. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's yeah. incredible. Yeah, it, my wife was so close to to make it, but she couldn't make it because her mom uh, was arriving that weekend. Oh, but okay. I was like, oh man, I wish you could go because it was super super fun jumping on the lake, everything. Does everything she also play? Fun. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. She's oh, my highest score. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure. Are you guys going to Milwaukee? Um. I don't know. That's the same weekend as Gehedu's Bachisado in Minnesota. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we might not we, see you. Okay. So we, we don't know yet. Uh, me and my wife, we, we're still like debating if we're going or not, but we, we might be there in Milwaukee. Well, I'll meet her at our next event. Yes. Sure. Yes. Yeah. Well, whenever <laughs> you guys come here to, to Indianapolis. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. We don't need a reason. <laughs> yes, no. They Capoeira. We don't have a reason. Like we will visit each other at some point. Yeah. yeah. We, you guys are are planning an hour about yourself for next year. Um. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. Not, not yet. yet. Do you always have your next? That you do always have your next date. Yeah. Yeah. You well, do? yeah. I usually I usually try to like plan for it or the same time. I was planning my first bachelor was in February. Okay. But but I'm gonna start moving to to the beginning of October. So okay. af after that week, probably the first or the second week in October, one of those two. And then okay. once that happened, that's going to be forever the, the, the same weekend. October. Okay. Yeah. That way he's set up for, and also my message calendar is, is he has it like set up for, for that weekend. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's smart. That's really smart. <laughs> yeah. That, that way we, everybody knows like, you know, this weekend is for, for Indianapolis event. Sweet. That's nice. Yeah. And then how, how was the, the experience of the students after they done with the bachisado, what they, what they said about the event and all that? Um, I think everybody had, yeah, I think everybody had a positive experience. I'm trying to think to the, the different folks that the three who made all of the food and organized everything certainly felt 
I mean, I, I believe so. I've talked to them, felt appreciated and um, so seen and that they also got to participate, which yeah. was my big concern. Yeah. Um, I, I think everybody was sort of, yeah, I mean, you know what a batch of Southern does, like people yeah. are on fire afterwards. Um, and it's, it's tricky because that was the, the summer and we're right at the, the fall point. And so um, I, I think it's, it's also just uh, moving indoors. It's going to be tricky to maintain all of that energy. Yeah. 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 Ho hopefully that keeps them pushing and, and training and don't forgetting that, you know, it's something really good coming up. Yeah. Yeah. But I, yeah, I think everybody felt as, at our um our post bachisado meeting everybody felt really positive about it so that's pretty cool yeah that's really cool and then and then to to wrap it up because i know i know you you busy too um what would be the last the the single advice for the capora community that you think that that everybody can can listen to to this to, to the podcast everybody listening single advice Oh my gosh, advice. Well, can I, let me think about, can I ask you first, what's your, yeah. what's your piece of advice for the Capoeira community? To stay united. Uh, ah. I feel like, yeah, I feel like we, we, we united, but we know that yet. Because I feel like we, we, as a Capoeira community, we, we have to support more each other. You know, uh -huh. it's, it's like, I told you that uh, when, when we're leaving uh, Madison, uh, or when we, we were leaving the, the Bachisau and be like, you know, like, us here in the Midwest, we we have small pockets of the uh, of communities, but it's not that far. Four hours is not far for us, and four hours and a half. I, I feel like probably after five hours, it started getting a little bit too far. But we are still close enough, you know. And there's messages that used to travel twelve hours, fifteen hours, twenty four hours to go to a couple event or to visit our nursery school. And again, doesn't matter logo i don't I, i'm not looking for logos you know i'm looking for capoeira for us to do capoeira and have hard and, and just to have fun we no matter logo no matter level no matter where you came from you know it's, it's let's do capoeira all together that's what really matters that's what we're looking for i think you were in the conversation i know you were and i think it was sabi Jean who was saying to us that it wasn't that long ago that that spirit that i hear in you didn't exist so much in the capital. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wasn't yeah. it Sabi who was saying that to us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was uh, Sabi, Mr. Papiva, you were there. Uh, I think Milan was there. I think it was, yeah, I think so. Yeah, but that, I think that culture it does exist more and more today, right? Yeah, that totally, totally. Come together, not necessarily to, like, to brawl. But, yeah, yeah. And not that it can't, not that it can't get, um, really direct and physical but yeah. that it's also about building community and playing together and building each other up right yeah yeah totally totally because i i remember back in venezuela we had a, a hada and i don't know if i mentioned this uh, during during his conversation but we had a, a hada for peace and peace mm -hmm. was the last thing in the in the hada <laughs> Because it was like two groups. It was Heises of Brazil and Sensala, the two biggest groups in, in Caracas, in Venezuela. It was, the last thing was peace in the hut. <laughs> Everybody was kicking each other super hard. Somebody got a broken nose. And wow. then it was a mess. And I was like, man, this is, I, I don't understand. You're supposed to be for peace, right? <laughs> and then today's days is totally, totally different. It's like everybody just want to have fun. It's just like everybody wants to jump. Everybody hugging each other. That's, that's what the capoeira I like to see. That's like the capoeira. And yeah, like you said, you can get physical. It can be uh, a little bit physical. But at the end, he's still having fun, right? And, and then there's no ego in front of us. And then there's no, I want to kill you. Then after the next hot, you know, it's just like, let's just have fun. It just That's the best part of capoeira. Yeah, I hear you. And I, I do agree that that is um, much more the culture now. And I still think that, your and your students as well um but your attitude and like action behind it of then going and visiting other groups and building community is is still fairly unique ah uh, thank you like i think people show up to each other's events right sure. um and and i could certainly do that more and um and i think what what you do as far as promoting it 
on your podcast and visiting and your students as well, right? Yeah. Like I forget who was it Colorida who first found the, yeah, yeah I mean, I still, I think that is still maybe a little bit more unique than we want it to be, right? Yeah. So I wonder, I do wonder like what, how do you become geared that way? Because that's, that's how we, I grew up in Capoeira in Venezuela. And then, uh, so I, I, somebody asked me this, the same question, like how, where the desire came from? And then uh, back in Venezuela, when it was the hate in between high Jesus Brazil and Sala, one of my friends that started with me uh, in high Jesus Brazil, he switched to Sensala. Mm. Then they had an, another friend that switched from high school Brazil to Sensala. And then, but we're still friends. And then after class, he was coming to, to the park where we used to train. And we used to train together. We go like backflips and do it just in the, in, the, in the grass, just talking and just helping each other to, to train. And then they, all the teachers, they were like, why are you hanging out with them? He's like, oh, because they're our friends. <laughs> what are you talking about? It's our friends. And then, but they're Sensalas. And they we're like, so what? It, your problem is you weak with them and it's not our problem mm -hmm. and then and then eventually the old teachers start joining us and then the other teachers start joining us and then when when i switched to capoeira brazil uh my instructor was was visiting sensala all the time all the time and then our event was like 50 percent us and and like 80 50 percent uh uh sensala other group and then our group was so huge and grew up super fast because we were helping each other. And then the Hada, the Hada was like our group when we started Capo de Brazil there in Venezuela was 10 to 15 people. And then when Sinsala came to our Hadas, it was like 30 people, 15, 20 people. And then it was a big, big Hadas because we help each other. And then the students get excited because they see a lot of people and then the beginners get excited and then they want to train more and then that brings more people. And then, you know, it's just a reciprocity. It's really cool. And it's really good to see that sense of, of community. And, and I feel like we can do the same here, you know, and I feel like as a, as a group, you know, again, I don't care about the group. As long as we, we have each other and we actually say we are a community and we act as a community, we can we can definitely grow bigger you know and you, we can help you grow your school and you can help me grow my school once you get to events because the newer people are yeah. gonna be like man this is so cool 50 people in an event man this is really cool yeah it, it's, it's, it's really nice to see people coming together for for the same point you know i i feel like if i could describe your orientation to Kapoor Kashishi, i would say that <laughs> yeah. your like your tagline would be don't you want to build a bigger family? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, like that's what your posture is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then and we want to grow, but we, we want to grow in our bubble. Why don't pack the bubble and just grow bigger? You know, it's like we, we put in our uh, limitations to ourselves and to a community. He says, no, man, let's just all go blow up all together. And it's not, it's not about you. It's not about me. It's about our community. It's about the entire feel you know it doesn't matter again doesn't matter how you look like where you came from as long as we want to do capoeira yeah yeah so but what is your single advice for the community <laughs> <laughs> um let's see okay how can i give can i give advice that i need to give to myself for sure 100 percent. um to lean into the part of capoeira that is not as natural to you so whether that's about the actual aspects of capoeira like you know the physicality the music learning about the history speaking the language or whether it's about um the the environment of capoeira like you're you know making assumptions about people in good faith or build like building building out the the community going to events you know so like whatever that is that's not so natural to you to try to lean into that part for and, sure. and grow that part for sure nice i like it i like it because that, that way we we can get out of our comfort zone right and then we can help because some people say you know it's, it's better to be outside of the comfort zone so you can grow but but if we don't try it, how we grow you know that's right yeah 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 Sure. Well, thank you so much, Folia. Thank you so much. It was super nice. 
And uh, I really hope to see you soon or any of your students. All of you guys are always welcome here in Indianapolis anytime. Yeah, thank you so much. I, ho I hope to play with you again soon. I, so there's this move that, that you do that I am um, inspired to learn. Which one? I can't, um, I can't quite describe it. It's like, a, it's like a passaging, you know, you know, passaging is that, do yeah. you use that language too? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a passaging, but, uh, and actually Kaju noticed it first. He's like, you know, Kashi, she does this, um, does this passaging and he, he loves passaging. It's like, he, oh, nice. if you ever watch his game, he like, he talks down about himself He'll be like, oh, I'm, you know, whatever bad game or, but if he has good vision and he loves to do, he loves to go around and okay. he does a lot of passaging. And so he noticed this about you first. And then I noticed, I was like, right, you do this. You're um, really good at going contra. So okay. instead of going with a kick and stepping yeah. in, yeah you step the other way and then slide your leg in from the inside and do a uh, Venga Chiva. Oh, I think I know which one you're talking about. It's, but it's, it's genius. I actually, so I went back and <laughs> watched, you. um, watched some video and I was like, how would he even think to do that? That's, uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank it's you. not the way that you would think to go in for a Venga Chiva. Okay. Okay. Is, if, if you watch the video, and uh, send me a link and let me know which minute. And I, I can kind of like make a video with my wife and tell you how. Well, no, we figured, I know, I, I know how we, we figured it out. Oh, yeah, <laughs> but nice. I guess what I mean is like, how did you figure out to do it in the first place? That's what I'm Oh, about. okay. I, I got I to gotta see the video. Yeah, the no, moment. we were, uh, Kaju and I, were, we were practicing it. In his <laughs> yeah, nice. The other day. Yeah, we were having a lot of fun, like practicing it. But I more meant like, oh, how did he, like, that's just, that's so smart to think to get into a Venga Chiva that way. And it's really sly because you don't see it coming because you're, yes. you're esquiva in contra. Like yeah, if yeah, your yeah. father comes this way, yeah. right to your right and you go contra and then you slide your other leg inside and you get, you get to their, um, you get to their leg in front and, and then get you. See, now I'm giving away all of your secrets. So I, <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think I know which one you're talking about. Yeah. I think so. I think so. I think, okay. I, I think I remember. I think I, I don't know if I did it to you or I did it to to Milan. I don't remember. Um, you uh, there were two two people that uh, we we saw you do it with um the the woman who um Penelope from New York. Okay. And then there was one other person. It might have been Milan. I forget. Um, yeah. You also had a really nice game. With Hi, thank Papiva. you so much. Oh yeah, we Papiva. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's it's so fun to watch like really skilled people play with him because yeah. you get to see their skill, but then you also get to see his vision. Like he sees freaking everything. Yes. Right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh Mestre, you know, and, and, and Papiva, I can tell that he, he has a lot of experience too. And he 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 likes that. I can see it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Fole, thank you so much. And uh let's talk soon and, and let's keep in touch, okay? Okay, take good care. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for getting this far. Remember, please subscribe. Give us a thumbs up on Facebook or YouTube. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. This is going to help us and help me to get bigger numbers and bigger subscribers so we can give more information, okay? Please, if you're listening, I know you're listening. I know you're watching. Please Give me a subscribe, give him a give, give me a like, okay? I know you're watching right here or listening. All right. Have an amazing day. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening every single episode, especially the episode we just did. All right. Thank you so much. Peace.